Hey and welcome back to Sean's Trains. Today we're going to unbox some new containers. Uh, I just picked these up. Uh, so I really I only use Walters containers and for my upcoming video, uh, which is going to be a, a massive review, is uh, Wellcar Wars. So I'm going to compare every recently available model of Wellcar that I can get my hands on back to back, all against each other, uh, endurance testing, testing with different brands of uh, containers, you name it. Um, I'm trying to get everything as factory conditioned as I can. I've got some A-Line cars, I've got a Rapido, Cato, Atherin, Walthers, Walthers Proto, you name it. Um, if you can think of it and I didn't name it off just there, comment it below. Um, I'm trying to get as many as I can, as many of them as new as I can or in factory condition. Um, but I wanted to take a look and review some of the Aurora containers quick and uh, look at a couple other things we got here. So let's open them up and take a look. These are from Lombard Hobbies down in Lombard, Illinois. If you haven't already checked them out, check them out online. They have some amazing deals. And they have very good turnaround time for shipping. And they put a little protection in there. And in case you've never bought from Lombard, right with your receipt, Get some fruit snacks. Who doesn't love some fruit snacks? If you don't love your fruit snacks, send them to me, because I'll eat them, because I love fruit snacks. So the first thing we have in the box here, we've got our Aurora miniatures. I've never, I've seen them before in person. I have not um, bought a set myself. Uh, I just try to stick with Walters. It's just easier. Um, very simple packaging, a uh, little label on the back. That's about it. Um, nothing to rant or rave about. I've got some uh, one containers here from Atherin Ready to Roll because I don't have any Atherin containers. And I don't have any Atlas containers either. Um, actually, I have a couple, but I wanted some more reefer containers uh, just because I start seeing them more and more. I thought it would be appropriate. So check, make sure there's nothing else in the box here. And that's good to go into the trash and recycling. All right, so let's take a look at our containers. So, uh, just taking a quick look at these. Um, for the detail, these are surprisingly well priced. Um, these guys are $27. These guys were $39. And these, I want to say, were $25 ish, $35 ish. Um, let me double check real quick. So, the Aurora miniatures were not disclosed on the receipt. Weird. Um, well, anywho, uh, I'll do that in editing. I'll put that in there. But, uh, I mean, not, a, not bad at all, I thought, for the amount of detail you get on them. Uh, so, I just want to compare these real quick, and we'll get to a little layout update. So, looking at the Roar miniatures first. Oh, there are extra detail parts in here. So, don't lose them. Um... But they stack them kind of interestingly so that they have room for those parts and you can kind of see all sides. Um, underneath you can see that there's not a whole lot of detail underneath these things but they do have um, the Aurora, Aurora Miniatures uh, website on there. And overall they just have some really amazing detail. There's, whoa, these are super light. There's like no weight to this at all. Um, which if you're running die cast wall cars is fine I suppose. Um, you probably don't need it. And the ends, I believe, open up. I could be wrong. I thought they opened up. I'm just trying to take a look at this a little bit here. Oh, okay, there we go. There's a little hinge here you gotta, or a little thing here you gotta grab. But look at that. It's even got a riveted floor. I don't know if you guys can make that up, but there's a riveted floor in there. Isn't that nuts? So, I don't care if you don't like Aurora miniatures. That's insane. I would have that on my layout any day of the week just as a container just sitting there. Um, you could model LA. You can model any place that has a container sitting around because everyone has a container sitting around. Um, and Marisk is popular, but honestly, I see more K-Line stuff sitting around than anything else. Um, so for the moment, uh, I want to say that I'm A, very happy with these. Um, two, they do not have pins in the bottom. 
uh, um, so they don't stack up that like that. And I'm guessing, yes, that is what these are, is the pins to stack the containers. So if you want, you probably need to glue them into the bottoms of these guys and then stack them. Uh, in the meantime, I'm not going to worry about that too much. We're going to look at our other containers here from Atlas. Check these out. So one thing I like about the Atlas containers is uh, the detail on the ends is pretty good uh, compared to um, Aurora Miniatures here. It's it's still pretty darn good. Uh, it's still cast in detail, whereas uh, Aurora looks like it's actually individually applied, which is kind of nuts. Um, but at least model for model here for how these deck containers are decorated. Uh, the Atlas, I would say, has got a little bit more detail with uh, some of the warning labels or, and safety stripes and whatnot. Um, part of that is because I think maybe it's a little bit taller. I'm not really sure, but they look good. And honestly, uh, the Atlas is a little bit heavier. Um, probably just more plastic being used or something. Uh, obviously, the ends don't open up on these. There's absolutely no detail on the bottom, uh, none whatsoever. Uh, so these wouldn't even go on, say, uh, your trailers and stuff for Atherin, um, where they've got the little in in imprint down here uh, that sits over part of the spine or trailer or whatever. Uh, at least from my little bit of experience, uh, that's how it goes. Oh, it's not damaged, it's just a little bit of dirt. Um, and then in the end, you get some detail with the piping and whatnot for the generator, for the air con or for the fridge or freezer. Uh, some more information on top. Um, yeah, still still very nice models. So now moving over to the Atherin. These are just the 40-foot containers. This is what I could find for Ocean Network Express. I love Ocean Network Express, and I think the next one that's going to be uh, really popular is that Z uh, something Zim. Um, it's a real cool, interesting uh, paint job in that container. I think that's going to be the next one to be super popular as uh, O and E falls to the wayside. Open this guy up here real quick, throw this packaging out, because we'll never use that again. So even if these guys don't play along well, I'll still use them in stack trains and whatnot, because you still see stuff stacked singly or by itself. It, it's, it'll work, it'll, it'll find its way. Um, so looking here, uh, very, very basically uh, detailed bottom. The back's got some nice detail to it here uh, with all the lettering and whatnot. Uh, molded in si uh, handles and whatnot. Uh, some basic lettering here. And then back here you've got your pad printed color inside. Uh, very kind of generic, kind of cheaply done. Um, as far as containers go, I think the Walthers look a little bit better. Uh, I actually have a couple of those to pull up real quick. So these are both Walther's containers. Uh, if you ask me, uh, I, I just like the fit and finish of these a little bit better than I do the Atherns. Uh, I don't know that they won't work together, uh, but we can actually see right here that the pins don't quite line up. So that wouldn't work that way. Uh, but it looks like this would stack on top of two and hold its own, which is good to see. So that would actually work in a well car as long as the um, bottom containers lined up in the middle. Uh, this is all stuff I'll cover way more in depth when we do the uh, war on the well cars, um, or well car wars. I haven't decided what I'm going to call it yet, so let me down, down in the comments what you think. And I'm going to go over all of this stuff between all the brands and manufacturers. I still have to get some uh, more containers uh, I want to check out, and I'm still working on the uh, Atherin and Scale Trains uh, well cars. Sorry, I keep saying A and I'm not Canadian, so... That's that. Now, let's do a layout update. Let's actually get to some other trains. All right, so went to Madison this last weekend, uh, hung out with Superior Scenics, and a shout out to Superior Scenics for sponsoring me at the show. They got me in, I helped them out at the booth a little bit. We did really good uh, with them, so I, I had a lot of fun and I hope they had some fun. Let me get this stuff out of the way here real quick. And I just want to go over a couple of things I picked up at the show. I got really lucky this year. Um, I'm kind of looking for some different things, not the usual, not just Milwaukee Road, whatever. 
and not just the best deal like I would normally do, I'm kind of keeping my eye out for certain things. So I found this Chrysler Crossfire at a, at a table. Um, he had 1078 on the original sticker and he sold it for, so, uh, I said, how much? He said five bucks, so I took it. Uh, I don't think I have a Chrysler Crossfire and it's kind of a unique car. Uh, unless you really know about it, you probably wouldn't have even known they were on the road. Uh, it's basically a Mercedes that was rebadged as Chrysler when Mercedes-Benz bought Chrysler. Um, and then at Teskies, I picked up a few things, including this little teardrop trailer. This will go into campgrounds over on the other side, and I'm really looking forward to putting that in, and that'll be coming up quicker than you think. Next up here, we have an Atherin Genesis SD70 ACE for Kansas City Southern. Um, I don't see too many of these for sale. Uh, it was uh, 125 bucks. I thought it was a decent price. Uh, I, I don't have one, and I'd happily sell one of my SD70 Max to get it. Uh, I'm going to see what the sound is like. Uh, this th doesn't have sound. It's just got DCC from uh, the last owner. Um, so I'm going to give it a shot and see if it's got a 21-pin decoder. If it does, great. If not, uh, that's fine. We'll work with it and get something else in there in the meantime. One thing I was really excited to find at the show because I was actually looking for a set of these. They're getting really hard to come by. Intermountain has another release coming of these, but they have to have enough pre-orders to do it. And right now they're nowhere close. We're talking about the twin stacks, and we're talking about the Maxi 5 uh, or Maxi 4 three-car set. So I got uh, TTX and Sealand patched for CSX. So Intermountain produces these for A-Line, and... They're doing another run. They're talking about it. It's on their website. You can go and look at the part numbers and everything. Um, and the thing of it is, is everyone's going to pre-orders now. So if you don't pre-order it, you're not going to get it. And the production run probably isn't going to happen. You've seen Rapido do it with their conditional runs. You've seen other manufacturers start to kind of lean towards, you know, whatever we pre-order is probably what we're going to make. And maybe a little bit more. Um, Rapido's even talked about how they don't do any extra DC only models. They only make a few extras of the sound models because it's just not worth it anymore. If, you know, if it doesn't sell out in the first run, you're sitting on it and you can't, can't afford to do it these days. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad that manufacturers are doing what they need to do to, sur ah, to survive, but it kind of makes it harder for those who might be shopping around for a little bit and hey, you know what? I think I like this and I want to go find that. Well, you can't. So... Uh, I'm glad that, you know, brands like Scale Trains are doing reruns of stuff that does do well uh, after it sells out. I'm really glad to see that, that Milwaukee Road and CSX and Norfolk Southern made another comeback in the SD40-2s. I'm just hoping that some other railroads and some other brands kind of do the same thing, kind of take the hints that, hey, we want this, but we got to show them. We got to show them the love. Um, so I did pay $140 for these. As far as, you know, current rate goes, you know, that's... Not even $30 a car, and that's about what it's going for. A new pack of Athern, ready to run, Maxi 5 cars, or whatever the heck they are, Maxi cars. It's $130, okay, if you can still find them from the last run. I got, they're 200 they're over $200 for the new run, and they're taking pre-orders now. Over $200 for Atherin ready to roll wall cars. That's nuts. I would take these any day of the week. The twin stacks, they're unique. They're interesting. They're shorter. I love them. I've never owned a set, so I got two. The patches are really cool, so I wanted to get those. And then we've got the three pack of Maxi 4s here. I'm really interested in testing these out and comparing these to the Atlas cars and the uh, Kato cars because they're similar but not the same, I don't think. Um, and I think the Cato is the same railroad as this. And then I think I've got the Paducah coming for Atlas. So I'm really interested to see how they work out. Because they all, I think these are all kind of like, they're plastic bodies and whatnot. Whereas, Ath, uh, excuse me, Walters is die cast and has some more weight. Uh, as well as Rapido. I'm really looking forward to testing those. I have had them out of the box. I have not gotten to play with them yet. So I'm really looking forward to it. All of this stuff will be out of the box and operating on a Superior Scenics layout another week. Uh, when I do the uh, well car wars. I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, otherwise, I think the only other things I picked up, I picked two, picked up two more of the uh, 5660 covered hoppers, uh, different railroads. Uh, right now all I have is TC, 
NS and some Union Railroad or something. I got them at a stupid deal, so I bought a bunch. Um, I kind of not like, I don't like having so many of the same railroads, so I'll sell a few of those and then I'll just keep six total. I think I've got six or eight of the Union Railroad, so I'll sell those. Um, you might see them popping up on the Facebook page. And then Tag Trains had this amazing deal, $10 each for 15 of these. So for 150 bucks, I've got a small unit train. Uh, eventually these will get patched out from Milwaukee Road. I think it'll be kind of neat, something unique uh, that you're not going to see everywhere else. Otherwise, all that's happening is just hooking up wire and testing models, uh, making sure everything goes back and forth the way it should, as is expected from these models. Um, this, as all of you know, this hobby is not cheap. It is what you make of it. I just saw someone the other day on Facebook, or yeah, today actually on Facebook, complaining about how expensive Bathroom Genesis was. And I said, well, it's not like you have Roundhouse or Redditorial that you can buy instead. Actually, there is. There's two other brands below Genesis that you can buy for a fraction of the price. Um, I will admit that the hobby has gotten out of control with this stuff. And after being in Madison and seeing 3D printing, I think there's going to be a huge swing going from buying stuff ready to go and doing kits again. You can go to 3dptrains.com, or th excuse me, 3dptrain.com, no S, and check them out. They do a lot of uh, narrow gauge and HO, NN, NN3, HON3, HON30, ON30, and ON3, and SN3. They will print up just about anything you're looking for narrow gauge. They have several of the people that they design the products. They print them, ship them, and get them to you. Um, I'm looking forward to getting one of those. I think it'd be neat just to have somewhere on the layout. Um, maybe just sitting in a grassy field somewhere. But it is so cool. Check out my layout or my uh, show video for the Madison show. It's on my YouTube channel. And I'll drop a link in the description. Um, great product. Great people to talk to and hang out with. They've got some really cool stuff. Uh, I can't wait to see what comes of this. I think if you have a 3D printer in your home, a resin 3D printer... You'll be able to buy kits online, they'll send you the parts, you print it up, you can print as many as you want, and I think that's what the hobby is going to come to. Um, prices are ridiculous, uh, plastic is getting the brass quality, it, it, it is at brass quality, rivet counter, uh, museum, and uh, rapido, it's, it's, it's nuts. It is absolutely bonkers where the hobby has gone, um, and especially with pricing. So I think, you know, 3D printing is the way to go. In fact, JT Customs is printing my abutments now for my other bridge. And once that's done, I'll have this track up like in a jiffy. It's insane. It's really insane. Uh, I, I had my other uh, abutments done and he printed them up in a couple of days. He had them and it was cheaper than buying the Walther's ones. I should have just had him do those too. Uh, they're lighter weight. Honestly, I think the detail's better and you can get it fit to any size you need. 3D printing I think is going to become the craftsman modeling of this world, of this hobby. It's taking over. You're not going to have, you know, shake a box kits like you do now from Accurail, like at the old Athrum Blue Box. Uh, I think stuff's going to come down to 3D printing and you're going to see companies coming out with programs that you can buy that's good for so many. I know we talked about this in the second section podcast. Um, but the more I see, the more I think that's where it's going to go. That if you don't have a 3D printer, you're buying it from someone who does. Um, and it's going to come down to the, you know, expensive stuff in the hobby. If you don't have the money to play, you gotta got to be good with the computer and start working online. Because this deals like this are getting hard to come by. Um, so let's take a look at some wiring. And uh, that'll probably be it. So... I've got a couple of buildings back from David Superior Cenex. He's been helping me out build some of these. I gotta place them yet. Those are going over in the uh, harbor. But my biggest thing that I've been working on is trying to get some of the wiring set up. I have some wiring to hook up over here for these switches and I'll have better power. Um, I'm really looking for a better way to tidy things up under the layout. I've seen some really good ideas out there. I'm looking for the one that works best for me. In the meantime, it's just dropping feeders, using these Wago connectors for uh, connecting everything. They work super nice, they're super fast. If you need to undo or redo something, you can do that. And uh, to my last point, with the 3D modeling and stuff, 
They can do a production run of five cars or 5,000 cars with these things. And Sue Parts is a great example of that. Sue Parts has got some amazing kits. Right now, they're the only manufacturer out there doing the extended ends. Uh, Sioux Line, Wisconsin Central, 61 foot thrall pulp wood guns. Um, all you gotta do is add trucks and couplers. It's 35 bucks. I mean, you gotta paint it and decal it and whatnot, but I mean, this is this is becoming like high-end Accurail, where it's a little bit more work, it's a little bit more money, but it's as unique a model as you'd get from anywhere else. So I think that's really cool. I think it's cool that a small, uh, uh, one person can start up a business with a product like this and do well. I think there's a lot of room in the hobby for people to do that. I think there's room for every hundred people in this hobby for someone to have a 3D printer in their own business. I honestly do. Because everyone has a need that a 3D printer can help fulfill and there's a lot of people out there like me who don't have the skills, the time, or the technology to do it and would happily do something like that. Or like with JT Customs and the, the abutments, it works out perfect. Um, so yeah, so this is about it. There isn't a whole lot left. Um, basically half the layout has track and wiring. Um, once I get around to the station, I have done some testing. I can go from the yard or from the port up the main, up to here, swap cars out. That much has worked well for me. Um, basically now I'm just testing engines and stuff to make sure things are working the way they should. So in the, uh, uh, <laughs> in going in that direction, um, I can't wait to get the rest of the track work up and I'm literally just going to spend hours just running stuff, just continuously running stuff because the moment you finish something you start gluing down ballast, something's going to go wrong and it's going to be too late to fix it or it's going to be a nightmare. I've got some kinks because I do not solder my track. Um, I feel like if you're good at laying track and if you're using the right track, you don't need to solder your curves. Um, but I do have a little kink over in the corner to fix. Um, other than that, that's about it. So uh, hopefully you guys are going to have a great weekend this weekend coming up. Uh, I, I get my puppy uh, tomorrow. I'm so excited. We can't wait. It's going to be so much fun. Uh, his name is Copper. He's a boxer uh, shepherd husky mix. And he's the cutest little thing. I kind of want to know if I can put a train hat on him, if he'll let me do that. Probably not. But I'll try. You'll see him in a video coming up here soon. And you guys have a great weekend. Thanks for checking in on Sean's Trains.